Hello and welcome. You're watching QTV and do not adjust your sets. We have returned to our normal <laughs> roles. Anybody watching last week would have seen that I was on that side and my friend and colleague, Mr. Mboj, was on this side. And Mr. Mboj, uh, welcome back. <laughs> is that versatile or what? <laughs> I'm, I'm glad to be here. Indeed, Absolutely. and I'm always glad that you are here. <laughs> and for anyone watching this for the first time, uh, we can review the show, kind of tells you what it's all about. Ten big stories from the week that we go through them in some detail. And you'll guess what? I've got my watch this time. It's a whole story about that <laughs> to itself. Um, but we'll try and keep very, very good time. And uh, the stories include uh, the late vice president being laid to rest. Uh, there's been a transport fare increase um, across the country. And also surprisingly good news about Africa's economic forecast. And we go abroad for at least one story. We go to Uganda, where they have struck oil. Those and lots, lots more to come. So, first story, the only place to start, of course. His Excellency, the Vice President, uh, was laid to rest at a state funeral this week. Here's a clip from that. He built him this way, gave him the voice he gave him, those loving eyes, that face, his statue, and he said, he's a papa. I'm grateful. We are all grateful. He took care of us. He was simple. He was humble. Every morning, this man would only ask for toast bread or tafala. And I'll take the time to pray for him on behalf of my family. There we have um, a moment that brought the country to a standstill. I think it's uh, true to say, uh, Mr. Mboj, um, we watched it uh, unfold. And there we heard from the daughters. Uh, very, very moving uh, testimony, not just from them, but from others who were gathered there at the National Assembly. What was your take on the send-off that we gave to our Vice President? Um, absolutely. That was the most um, poignant moment for me seeing the two girls, our, our youth, mm. being helped they're supported um, mm. by um, her sister. Um, and, uh, this was just quite, quite extraordinary. Mm. Yeah, well, I mean, the state funeral absolutely fit. Indeed, indeed. Yes. But perhaps more important for us now is about what did he represent? Well, this well, is what was he? I mean, that we stuff that we can carry forward, sure, isn't sure. it? That's right. So, who was he? What did he do? Oh. Um, how come this appeal for, mm. for me as a journalist, mm -mm. looking at the sort of almost like a na national chorus yes, yes. of approbation, you know, they what admired him, they respected him, sure. and all of that. So one is sort of trying to distill, sure. you know, a kind of essence. What was the appeal? Yes, I mean, and, and it's, it's quite a complex mix, uh, mm. not in a kind of negative way. Um, as you said, uh, across the country there was approbation, there was praise for him. Yes. And people praised different things of him. It was either um, his honesty, his humility, his forthrightness, etc., etc. You know, his intelligence. Everywhere you turn, somebody came out with another anecdote about why it was they respected and loved the man. Oh, oh absolutely. Um, what, what did the um, the speaker say, Fabakar, mm -hmm. um, the, the deep civility yeah. that, that comes through, sure. and what he called the quiet thoughtfulness, yes. the, the, yes. the thoughtfulness that sort of comes through. Indeed. So, yeah. so everywhere, um, um, the courage, sure. as our president said, when the former vice president, in a way, sort of threatened that, it, that hey, look, you know, I am going to speak the truth. I am going to speak my mind. If I'm going to be sacked for it, well, fine. That's <laughs> right. You know, speak the truth or damn the devil, as they well, say. Well, this is it. Absolutely. Sure. So, sort of, that's, that's courage. That's right. And the approachability. Yes, indeed. The human being, so yeah. many ex-students or people he had worked with, yeah. when, you know, from what they said, the testimony, well, the We heard of one person who, uh, because he was having problems getting a scholarship, he was being blocked by various people who were probably thinking of giving it to their families. 
um, he was then the minister, uh, higher education minister, he got to hear about it and he said to them, bring me his file. And within a couple of days, he'd approved it because he saw no reason not to. I mean, that's the kind of thing that uh, he did. The, the daughter said um, one of the things he also like being is like the problem solver mm, mm, mm. that really came through. That's right. like that, and, like and that came through in what the no. president said about him yeah. because when the president referred to this thing about said, I don't care, he said he's not the kind of man who would walk away from a job that he thought he could do. And, you know, that again come through because if he thought there was a problem that he could solve, he would try and solve it. He wouldn't walk away from it. And, 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 and yeah. that was it. Uh, that was really the key. That was why people, I think, respected him. Mm -hmm. But let's look at his period, his tenure as minister. Mm -hmm. Introduced all sorts of policies. Um, national education policy. Was yeah. it? There was a Tibet policy. That's right. Um, GTTI transformation to use that as yeah, yeah. right. an and university yeah. technology. And MDI being transformed as well. He, he did so, so much there. Yes, that th th so that was quite interesting. Yeah. So th that was why we thought. When he was made primary um, uh, vice president, <laughs> he said, uh, wait, said prime that, minister. That, 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 <laughs> and in, case, in the way he changed the role, he almost made it a prime ministerial role. So you're right. So yes, carry on. Sorry. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. As minister, he said, okay, his experience is in education. Mm -hmm. He's done all sorts of things. Sure. But then suddenly, with the shuffle, shuffle, Quite. he promoted to vice, vice president. president yeah. He thought, ah. Maybe the president wants to tap into something much more than sure. his skills mm -hmm. in education. Indeed. Because really, his civil um, service mm. um, experience. Yeah, quite. He had gone through every through the round, ranks, yeah. if you like, of, of, of the whole hierarchy, mm. the whole ladder, and, and stuff like quite. that. And ended up being permanent secretary That's right. in different ministries. Yes. And he had gone out experience with the World Bank, yeah, experience sure. with UNDP. So he had the right mix. Sure to play that role. Sure. So we were thinking that perhaps mm -hmm. we've suddenly got our prototype, yes. if I can call it that. Yes, indeed. indeed. Prototype that's, that's what vice we said when president. Yeah, sure. Given the way our president is giving our president sure. something that would complement him. Indeed, indeed. You see, this highly technocratic person who can hold the ministries to account. Sure. He will focus on the almost administrative stuff. Well, this is it. And, and what was interesting, I know we, don't, we can't spend all the time of on course. this story, but <laughs> I think what was interesting about the, the, the retreat, the cabinet retreat that's been much talked about, I think what was interesting, the words he said, kind of throwing down the gauntlet to his fellow ministers, you actually could not imagine the president saying it. So perhaps he needed somebody, a vice president, who could say that, and say it in a very straightforward, honest way, direct to them about, yes, it's about privilege, but it's the privilege to serve, not to just enjoy the privileges of the jobs. Somebody <coughs> who understands th that role, somebody mm -hmm. who's got the right set of skills, sure. because the president also um, um, emphasized the competence. Indeed. You know what sure. I mean? Yes, so yes. you can be morally all good and all the rest of it, humble and all of that, fine. Mm -hmm. But competence really matters for us to see the outcomes, the results. Sure. So he also embodied that. Yes. So all the virtue, mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. I call it, yes. and also the virtuosity, virtuosity. that Indeed. capacity to um, um, achieve, sure. the capacity to um, plan projects, and implement them, them, get my outcome. Performance, like yes. the, the music, the music, <laughs> music maestro, right. virtuoso performance. Right. You have to deliver. He, and he That's delivered. That's the idea. And he delivered. Thank you for that, mm -hmm. Mr. Mboj. And uh, we say once again our condolences to the family. Now on to our second story, completely different story. Um, a report came out this week, African Development Bank is the biannual report. And we were all getting ready to hide behind the sofa, under the tables, whatever, expecting the worst but it didn't quite turn out that way. Have a look. According to the bank, the GDP averaging around 4% in over the next two years is higher than projected global averages of 2.7% and 3.2%. The report highlights that African countries need bold action policies, including a mix of monetary, fiscal, and structural policies to help their economies mitigate the compounding risks. The report's comprehensive growth analysis shows that the continent's five regions remained resilient with a steady outlook for the medium term, despite facing significant headwinds due to the global social... Our colleague, Jennifer Sonko there. Uh, Mr. Mboj, um, maybe I was looking in the wrong place, but I certainly did not see this one coming. But then I was kind of berating myself. I thought, well, let me go online and see 
what others are saying and guess what nobody else seemed to have seen it coming in other words the kind of the the, the, the positive spin that was given to africa's prospects what what, what was your take on that uh, i remember that a, a few weeks ago mm. um, we discussed on um the drive time, time show the yeah. world bank report the yeah, yeah, um, yeah. global economic prospects yeah. published in January 2023. Well, that's right. You know, th th that sort of thing. Yeah. What do we have there? Global growth will slow to 1.7% from yeah. the 3% expected um, um, six months ago. Yeah. And when it comes to our area, emerging economies, yeah, they yeah. call it, yeah, yeah, sure. we should average 2.8% and, and all that stuff. That's it's really right. very different from the, what, 4%? Percent? Yeah, they the say 4%. It will average 4%. 4, 4 percent it there. is quite a difference. I mean, uh, in that we're talking about hundreds of millions, if not billions, in, in, in terms of, you know, across the continent. That's true. But it appears to me mm. that the sort of the projections, I think, mm -mm. will depend on governments taking certain bold, bold steps. That's, right. that's how I've read that, the situation that's, that's when, exactly I, when I, I read it. Say, yeah? I was going <laughs> to say there's a, there's a caveat. There. There's a caveat there. Uh, uh, and, so and quite interesting. What about if they don't? Well, yeah, so exactly. You know, what about if they don't? If they don't. And, uh, and, uh, in, and when we look at the around the world now, um, economists will have to tighten so much sure. to deal with inflation. Well, that's right. Nobody that's knows right. how long. And deal with the external, the shocks. external shocks. That are and uh, I mean, the report, I think it's about 78 pages um, mm -hmm. for the news I had to read, <laughs> read it. And so, uh, you know, I was able to pick through. And as you rightly said, they are saying that they have to take bold steps. Um, and for a lot of them, they're even saying things like, you know, uh, trying to curb your dependence on imports and that sort of thing because you know there's a lot of money going out of various economies because they're importing so much and they're trying to encourage them to get farmers to grow more of the stuff that they consume uh, yeah, so there's there, there is this thing that yes if you read it just on the headlines mm -hmm. it's very positive it's very bullish mm -hmm. compared to to you know, world bank and others um but as you said, if they don't take these policies, then does that mean that they won't achieve, uh, you know, what, what the projections uh, state? And mm. what are the preconditions? You see, it's easy to say that I want to achieve this, I want to achieve mm -hmm. that. But what do I need to do first yes, to, me to, to achieve that? Yeah. It seems that sometimes we do not go to sort of laying mm -hmm. the preconditions to do something, sure. and then we come up with a policy, yes. and then in the application it, co it collapses. Yes, exactly. So <laughs> it's quite curious yeah. there. So just like the, the, the echo. Yeah, We've been saying it. That it's been part of the plan since 1975, the formation right. of ECOWAS. Right. But the conditions are not really there. And of course so we have that story come, later. We'll on. have th that story sure. later. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I think um, um, this is the key. Uh, it is. How do we um, create mm -hmm. the, the conditions, conditions that yeah. would enable sure. us to achieve this, these outcomes? This mm -hmm. is it, so mm -hmm. yeah. so while we're excited, mm -hmm. we're cautiously optimistic. Yeah, cautious. exactly. Thank you, Mr. Ambrose. And now on to something that most people have a say about. What is that? Transport fares have gone up yet again. Have a look. Abdullah Jalo is another taxi driver at Wasfield. He says he's not worried about the fares increase. The fares have been increased, but I am not charging $12. If my passenger gives me $10, I accept it. And if a passenger gives me a $20 note, I still return $10 exchange. The reason is we are all in this together. They need us and we need them. But the best thing will be for the government to consider doing something about the fuel price. For government to do something about the fuel price, you heard there from our colleague uh, Maud Lamin Choi. But I quite like that public spirited chap who wasn't going to charge extra. Um, because uh, he said, you know, we, we're all in it together. If only they all thought like that. <laughs> Mr. Mbord, let's be honest, most of the people, they, they don't even drive on behalf of themselves. They drive on behalf of somebody else. They're, they're hired. And their bosses will be licking their lips at the extra two Dallases uh, per passenger per, per trip. So <laughs> we're all in it together. I um, guess we all are. Th this morning, I took one right. on my way to work. And the the passenger 
paid the old fare. Right, right. But the driver said, no, things have changed now. It's now $25. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. Yes. So, very, what, would very rare. Been, what so, would it have been before? Mm, sorry? What was it before? Before, I mean, they've added the $2. So, that so was for two, two trips. Two, two, ah, okay, That's right. two, two. It should two, be really 24, 24. Yes. But he said 25 I said, okay, maybe yes. the change. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. change would feature it, in this it, story. It, a yeah. lot of them said yeah. they, they usually they wouldn't have change. That's but I right. said, that's your problem. You should go and find change. Yeah, indeed. You know, yeah. That's not the passenger's problem, yeah. please. Yeah. They, they, that sort of thing. Yes, but, but what I'm interested in, I haven't been able to test, is this um, route, route license. license I was going to come to. I was actually uh, going to ask you whether you've, mm. you've been aware of its no, operation because we've been told it's going to be monitored as part of this thing. In case anybody doesn't know what this is about, it's about yeah. giving drivers a prescribed route that they are meant to apply and not mm. others and then not stop and then charge people for half the journey and then charge them again for the other half of the journey. Mm. It's from point to point type of thing. But well, we don't know how it's going to be working or how it's going to be monitored. Yes, I was hoping you'd tell me. <laughs> <laughs> so, so this is it. We, we yeah. Often we come up with these schemes, but we do not sort of, in a way, Indeed. think it through well, that's sort right. of to, to, to get um, 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 what we want. So I, I really do not know how the no, licensing no. scheme is, is going. Um, with the um, fares, mm -hmm. with the two dollars, sort yeah. of we've been expecting it how well, for a while now. Because we've been following the stories that was going on around That's the world. Right. So, uh, government doing something about the price of petrol. I'm not sure what government can do uh, beyond the subsidies. Beyond that the already. subsidies that they've been doing, and yeah. with that, it has to stop at some point. Of course, if, you know, course. we don't have infinite resources where we will constantly be, 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 be subsidizing. And even with that, some of the petrol mm -hmm. uh, importing companies were not happy, as we know. They called this press mm -hmm. release, they actually blast the government about, you know, saying that, you know, government was actually harming their business and they were threatening a strike, uh, yeah, as, we, as we know. Absolutely. So here, yeah. um, I don't know, the three dollars change, if you give them <laughs> um, 15 dollars a well, I think we'll go on with that for a while. Oh, well, you, you will have hard exchanges between passenger driver and that sort of thing um, um, for a while. Sure. But, you know, it, it, was, it was really about to come, yes. as difficult as it might be on some people. We heard the footballer in our story who yes. said, oh, God, now I have to yes. pay extra, even though they didn't pay me anything back. That's right. I pay to go to training. Have to I pay to, to training, go back home from training. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's really tough, but it's just... Yeah the situation that we are in. We're all in it, as the driver says. We're all in it together. Thank you, Mr. Mbroch. And now on to another story. Um, uh, we've been having this debate for the longest time about, you know, robberies and burglaries. Are there more of them or just more of them being reported? Who knows? Until we get the stats, uh, we won't know. We did try and get the stats for this, but um, they're not quite ready yet, so we didn't have them. Not from us, but from the police to give them to us. Uh, but don't worry, if you watch QTV, we'll probably have them on this morning to explain the statistics going back over the last three, four, five years. Anyway, most recently, some thieves have been apprehended and they're in custody and they seem to have been very, very busy. Have a look. He is the prime suspect uh, as far as this case is concerned. And when he was arrested, it was the same because he's a serial burglar uh, who has been convicted of, uh, on three occasions in the past. So when our detectives were on investigation with the complainant, uh, when they saw him somewhere in Sierra, it was too easy to identify uh, that uh, he might be going along with some stolen items. Uh, it was there and then he was asked to park in, in, in Jaring Police checkpoint uh, and his uh, vehicle was searched. And of course, when he came out, some of the stolen items were identified by the complainant. So it was too easy for the detectives, uh, even though it was robbers. You know, it was took, took us from Combo to Sierra. Uh, there you had it, uh, viewers and Mr. Mboch. Mm -hmm. Now, um, interestingly for many people, um, they didn't alight on the fact that the police had been quite robust in apprehending this guy thanks to a tracker that was in the phone they all alighted on he was a serial burglar. <laughs> um, what was your reaction when you heard this story? It was not a confession <laughs> of failure yes. of law enforcement in, in a wider yeah. um, 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 context. Mm, mm. The, the arrest and investigations and all that, sure. and the court system as and well. Court, yeah, will all be and, and they did talk about it. that in, 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 the, in the press conference, I have to say. Um, I think 
we probably saved his job. He, he was quite mm -hmm. scathing mm -hmm. <laughs> about the court system, <laughs> which I didn't think he should, he should have been. But uh, he was being honest. And I think the, um, the media actually appreciated the fact that he had done so. But as you say, um, uh, we, it's not the first time. The other story that we featured of these people who caught this chap on um, CCTV, again, when they came to the police, the police named him straight away and said the exact words, oh, he's a serial burglar. I keep hearing yes, this phrase. This is what they call recidivists. Yes, we, there's something that we need to do mm -hmm. about that. And another, is it a trend? I'm not sure yet. Mm. I, I, even though it's beginning to look like one, a potential threat, anyway, mm -hmm. let's mm -hmm. put it that way. Mm -hmm. These retirees and diasporans yeah. um, who live in these exclusive estates and, right. and, and, and the like, yes, yes. it appears as if you they're have, being um, targeted they're almost. being targeted by, <coughs> uh, by, by these burglars and, and, and criminals. Sure. So we must also be watchful of that part. Sure. Because of how we rely so much on terrorism, well, that in yeah. itself is really very, very important. Yes, yes. I mean, perhaps if you look at our statistics, the rate of crime will be so low. Mm -mm -mm. But yet, some of these high-profile sort of headline stories, yeah. they will do more damage, as, as, as it were. <coughs> it's so unfair, really. It, but again, it's just the nature of the social media, the world of the social media, where in that exceptions can be amplified so much, they seem to be the reality. I, <laughs> I, I, I totally agree with you, and I, I hope somebody from the BBC is watching because of what I'm about to say next. Um, there was an incident about maybe seven years ago in, in Freetown where there was a clash between opposition supporters and ruling party supporters and a couple of people were stabbed, nobody, not fatally. Um, and then when I went to the BBC page for Sierra Leone, they were warning people mm -hmm. against going mm -hmm. to Sierra Leone. And so I said to them, at that time, in London alone, there had been 17 fatalities from stabbings. I said, you would never dare put on your website, don't come to London. Mm. But you have the nerve. Because it's an African country, you think we don't care, and you like to exaggerate two people were stabbed, and not even fatally. And you're telling people, don't go to this country? It's ridiculous. And that's why this, these things matter. Absolutely. When people hear about one or two burglaries, they start thinking that places riddled with burglaries and robberies, and they will stop coming. So consequences could be quite uh, significant. That is why context matters. Indeed. So all of these um, figures, mm -mm. you really cannot deal with, with them really in isolation. Quite. There has to be this context. So really, it is, it is our job to, to provide this context. Mm -mm. So this is that I will look at it f from that angle. Mm -mm. So the police team must be very careful here, sure. as, as it were, and really try to stamp out this, to, to in, crack in, down indeed. on it, really. Sure. Because some, some time back, <coughs> there were people also arrested. That's right. They said it, they, that group included a girl, yeah, that's something right, that's like right. that. That's, that's right. who were going around robbing people that's in right. the area. So yep. let's be careful, it doesn't grow. And, and one of our colleagues, not in the, on the news side, when, we, when she was watching the story as we carried that story on the news, said, you know, we keep hearing about these arrests. She said, what? How come I never hear about stiff sentences? And it, it kind of made me stop and think. And I thought, I said to her, maybe we need to do a story about that, you know, about some of the ones go back that, you know, we featured about a year ago, and they were apprehended, presumed they were tried. Let's go and find out what sentence they got, because we, we've not done that, and maybe that's a failing on our side. But I think the public don't get the sense that they read lots and lots of stories about people being sentenced for these types of, of things. Oh, absolutely. So you're going to have that coordination between mm. the police yeah. and the courts. Mm -mm -mm. What yeah. are the courts doing? Sure. Because we, we've heard um, um, a police officer, mm. at some point he didn't go into details, mm -mm. but he hinted at what he felt that was really a bottleneck. <laughs> that was really he did. he said, we do the investigations, yes. the people get, uh, they get charged rather, you know, we do the investigations, they get sent to court, they get convicted, or at least he said, at least we, we, we do what we're supposed to do. We do our bit, and then it's up to the courts. 
and and you, you're Your right. Religion. Precisely. Yes, right. I think yes. that was why he, I think he deliberately said, um, serial burglar. burglar. He's been doing this all the time, but whenever he went to the courts, yeah. perhaps they'll give him three months, six months, I don't know. Or a fine. Uh, or a fine, and then he will go back to it. What can we do? Sure. So really, yeah. we must harmonize yeah. the two, the, right. the parliamentarians, the, the ministers involved, harmonize the two. If we need to bring in new legislation, mm -hmm. please do so. Quite. But let us sort of tackle, tackle this yeah. just sort of burglary, breaking into people's homes. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it might grow into what? And the robberies, what? So not only to deadlier weapons than the cutlass now they took to people's yes, houses. Yes, so not only would it be guns. Well, you just never know. You it's just have danger. to, you know, nip it at the butt. Sure, sure. It's a danger. Thank you for that, Mr. Ambush. And now on to another court-related matter. Big story. The uh, alleged coup plot has taken yet another twist. What's that twist? Have a look. Appearing in a bill of indictment, meaning those military personnel charged by the state for the criminal trial, are Sana Fadera, Jibril Dabo, Ibrahim Asano, and Omar Njai. The state has charged the alleged ringleader Sana Fadera with treason, while the remaining soldiers face treason and concealment of treason charges. Those military personnel excluded from the new bill of indictment are Omar Koli, Bakar Njai, and Baraturi. And also absent in the Bill of Indictment is Lamin Jadama, the military personnel at large and being pursued for allegedly being part of the said coup plot. Uh, there you have it. Um, we went to court expecting possibly that more names would be added. In fact, names were subtracted, Mr. Boj. And I mentioned in connection to the other story about Africa's global sort of economic prospects uh, I didn't see that coming I didn't see that coming either in this trial but then I suspect there'll be more twists along the way oh absolutely I think none of us could see this coming mm -mm. At, at, at all and it was quite interesting now in the end mm. we've got now five accused I remember at some point especially when that the new national security advisor mm -hmm. when he had that press briefing yes and the civilian element was sort of emphasized. Yes. One got the sense that, oh, they, they've got sort of like at least a paper trail, but they've got something, a trail there that can catch them and, sure. and the like. But now, as it turns out, not a single None. civilian is under charge. Right, that one. in itself is quite interesting. Mm -hmm. But fine, they can remove art names, yep. whatever, right. because of law, yep, yep. the way the law works. So they'll right. have to sort of follow you know, um, um, certain ways of thinking and, and, and doing things. I'm um, granted, but we'll all be watching. Yeah, indeed, indeed. When we saw, said, hmm, that's yeah. interesting. Yeah, yeah, quite. Yeah, let, let, let's, quite. Let's, let's move on. That's right. And, 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 and see. Really and, 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 you know, in the preliminary sort of statements that were made, they talked about having nine witnesses for the prosecution. They talked about video and audio evidence that they will be presenting um, to kind of make their case. Um, and so, of course, you know, everybody's watching uh, with, with, with great interest. And yes. when you mention all of these things that you've got, mm. fine, I'm not sure this is about um, how long the list is. Mm. It is about the quality of it. Yeah, They'll yeah, all sure. be tested by the other of uh, um, attorney. So you may mention a whole a long list mm, mm, mm. of all sorts of things, sure. but in, evidenti in evidential terms, mm -mm may not amount to much. Well, this is it. Yeah. So we will just wait for uh, yeah, as it were, the, really the, the trial to begin and all these claims tested, claims sure. and counterclaims all tested. Mm -hmm. And we have an independent arbitrator, the judge will, 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 will decide. And then we, 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 we see where we are next. Indeed. We look forward to the next twist. <laughs> and this takes us nicely to the break. And after the commercial break, we will continue with five more stories. Don't go away, join us after the break. QMoney is back again with its easy to use, secure and convenient mobile app that allows you to carry out all your transactions. No matter where you are or what time it is, you can always access your funds. With the new QMoney app, you can cash in and out, buy credit, buy QPower, shop, make payments, and so much more. You can also send Q money, pay bills, receive international remittances, and transfer cash to others. Just download the app from your Play Store or App Store and get started. 
For more information, call Customer Care on 133. Q Money, Sinu Kalpe. We innovate, others follow. As the fastest growing GSM company in the Gambia, QCell has the widest 4G plus coverage in the country. Three times faster internet speed than our competitors. So switch now and dial star 335 hash and enjoy what true 4G feels like. QSL, Gambia's trusted network. Hello and welcome back. You're watching QTV and you are watching The Week in Review. I'm Ari Darami and here to go through the stories with me, I have friend and colleague, Mr. Momodun Boj. Uh, Mr. Boj, as ever, thank you for your interjection so far. I'm glad to be here. And uh, for those viewers who, for whatever reason, are only tuning in now, very naughty. You've missed five great stories, but hey, don't switch off. Five great stories are still to come. Now. The next one, uh, completely different to what we've been discussing, although Mr. Mbosh sort of mentioned it a bit. Mm -hmm. um, recently, Brazil and Argentina have uh, mm -hmm. been thinking of uh, getting a single currency uh, between them. That's going to be called the gaucho. Here in West Africa, we've been talking a lot about the echo. A lot of talk, very little action. And now the speaker of the ECOWAS parliament has put in his own few words. Have a look. Have a listen. Speaker Tunis said the lack of a single currency among ECOWAS member countries has been identified as a major obstacle and a factor that aggravates transaction cost. This parliamentary seminar should therefore enlighten us on the conditions for strengthening convergence and macroeconomic stability in the sub region. It will also provide a greater insight into the coordination of economic policies and the development of a payment system for the member states to facilitate their economic integration. Uh, Dr. Mo Mohamed Sidi, Tunis. Mm -hmm. um, now, uh, Mr. Mboj, I don't want to pick a fight with him, <laughs> uh, but he said in the extended piece there that, in fact, it was this lack of single currency that was holding up everything. But then I thought, hang on, before we even thought of this, we don't seem to do a lot of trade <laughs> amongst ourselves anyway. Uh, so uh, I'm not sure why this is holding anything up, if at all, really. 10%, <laughs> I think we will get in that, that story, we will get the exact figure That's of right. trade within yep. among 10%, ourselves. 10%. Ma merely 10%. But, but this is it. I mean, some of us sort of like follow the echo, mm -hmm. the euro. The euro is the kind of what it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's, very, it's, it's almost similar. an echo of the euro, it's no pun intended. It, absolutely. Yeah. So you, you get to realize they talk about stuff like convergence mm, mm, mm. of maybe monetary That's policy. Right. policy. There, there are certain yep, yep. economic preconditions as sure. we be going back this to stuff like that. Mm, mm. You, you don't really get the roots, as it were, the base, right? Quite. And you want to come and build something from that. Yes. That is why things are not um, working. Why no so problem. apparently there must be certain preconditions sure. before you can have a monetary union. Sure. And that is what we, we haven't achieved. Mm -hmm. we, we all know that the, the nation states individually sure. We, we're all hobbling, yeah, yeah, <laughs> as quite, it were. Quite. So then the, 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 the bigger body, mm -hmm, <laughs> you mm -hmm. know, embody all of us, sure. would also hobble. We'll just <laughs> reflect what, what we are. Well, this so is that is really the issue. Yes. But it, it's not a bad idea. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've got another target, 2027. Well, 2027, yeah, quite, quite. find it to get the echo. Yes. So we will hobble along. Okay? Yes. I, we shouldn't kid ourselves, but, but nonetheless, at least we have certain targets. Mm -mm -mm. Th there's something that one can walk towards. Sure, sure. We will have a good number of governments, perhaps, who wouldn't. Yes, yes. But, but there's a target there for sure. in the longer term. Mm. And I think we will inch, as it were, our way towards. Well, this is it. Because, mm. I mean, when they look at the euro, obviously they look at the successes, uh, the successful part of it. But also coming with that has been the kind of removal of tariff barriers and so on. It's not been just the currency on its own. 
And yet here we've had these horror tales of people trying to get from here through Senegal to Guinea-Bissau and all the problems they've encountered to do trade between those three countries. Uh, trades that uh, theoretically, because of ECOWAS protocols and so on, should not exist. And yet the barriers are there, the, the, the roadblocks are there literally and figuratively. Um, and so, you know, yes, it's nice. Uh, we, I think most of us love the idea of the ECHO and what it might represent, but you have to build these other systems for it to function properly in the way that uh, the, the speaker thinks it, it will become a, a game changer because you've got 400 million people in the region. That's a lot of people. You know, about half of them are in Nigeria, admittedly. Um, but nonetheless, it's, it's, it's a 400 million market that things could move smoothly, but as well as the echo, you need these other policies to be in place, otherwise, it's, it's for naught. The, the economics of the situation mm -hmm. is one thing. It's yeah. easy to make these cases and give us graphs and charts yeah. and all the rest of it. Mm -hmm. But again, there's a political angle. Sure. You will have some political commentators telling you that mm, for, for such things to happen, are we going to have a single central bank? Mm -hmm. That means you will lose your capacity to, to deal with um, monetary policy. Yes, if you right. abandon that. So mm -hmm. notions of sovereignty, and then even and the institutions the, are the fragile. I mean, there are so the many sizes things. The of sizes. The, 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 the markets. You take mm -hmm. Nigeria as the obvious example in terms of size and population, and you take Ga uh, Gambia and Cape Verde <laughs> in terms of, you know, look at the disparity between those, you know, and yet you're saying that, you know, same currency, and it's going to be a difficult one. Um, absolutely. So how are we um, um, going to organize yeah, it? Sure. What, what form would it take? Mm -hmm. So this is it. Because in these um, um, agreements, these um, um, associations, mm -hmm. as, as it were, yeah. it, it's not simply win-win um, for everybody. It isn't true. It's never the true. The bigger, the bigger the powers, as, as it were. As we found out in, in, in Europe, now, um, Germany, France, Italy. Yes, much more than, than, than the others. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And when you take Gambia, for, for instance, mm -mm. how much of you know, cloud. its ego, we yeah, don't yeah, have much of a cloud, mm. but how would it damage us in well, some yeah, way? Quite. So we must really get to the nitty gritty, to the details. Sure. Superficially, it's being sold yeah. as something positive. It's Silver a good bullet. thing. Yeah. Silver bullet. This yeah. is what we need to do. Yeah. But can hear for people who understand these mm. things, how they work, will understand that it's not always a win win situation. Yeah. I hope that we've put in there the best representation of what we can do, you know, mm. defending our interests. Yes. We remember um, Margaret Thatcher, for instance, and <laughs> other European leaders, how they were fighting with the European Union, before you know, the, before, right. before anything like that, so that they can have concessions in this, I concessions indeed, in indeed. that. This is how you negotiate the, the, these things. Well, that's right. Do we have the right skill right. to be negotiating these things on mm. our behalf? I'm not sure. Yeah, and do we have to actually force certain Absolutely. concessions that benefit us, again, I doubt it. The devil is in the detail. We it must look at the details. Indeed. Thank you for that, Mr. Mbroch. Now, on to another story. Uh, we hear every NGO that is here that is doing anything to do with women's empowerment will tell you that this is very much a patriarchal society. Some people are not just letting it go. They're fighting back. Fighting back in ways you might not expect. Have a look. When you are a married woman, some says that to your husband that you should not allow her do this job because they say um, most of this job like if you are giving birth like it will deform your womb you will not even have a child some I say that is strong that is not even encouraging the female automotive service providers is open to training young Gambian women who want to take up working in the automotive sector as a career Sina Bunyang a trainee came across this opportunity when Fatmata introduced the female mechanic club in her school. After finishing high school, Sena would join the female automotive service providers. She urges youths to acquire skills. I'm so proud to join Fatmata that what men can do, women can do it too, or even more. What men can do, <coughs> women can do, or even more. Uh, it was interesting here uh, in the office when that was broadcast uh, a couple of times uh, some of the comments uh, including one colleague I won't name you <laughs> relax, who said that uh, you know he couldn't imagine himself introducing his partner to the family and saying she's a motor mechanic 
That's the kind of thing we have to deal with. Ab absolutely, stereotypes. You know, uh, yeah, honestly, the yeah. kind of conventional, yeah, conventional thinking, and, and like you know, uh, the, 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 there was a phrase that was quite popular. They call it um, "bonfire of the vanities." <laughs> right, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to have a bonfire <laughs> of the stereotypes. This is fantastic. Quite, quite. Absolutely, but why not? Yeah, indeed. indeed. This is about using my brain mainly yes. there might be difficulty with um, mm -hmm. um the labor yes in terms of phys physicality physical physicality mm -hmm. but i can hire somebody for that well this is it. i'm the entrepreneur i'm the, I'm the business the person the, i'm, I'm the, the brains brain. i'm the one yeah. with the brains and right. stuff like that right. very good with what i do mm -hmm. <laughs> you know and also can run a business absolutely cool. we must smash all yes. these uh, stereotypes yes. really and to uh, come into uh, the modern world. Well, this is it. I remember, and and you know, it's not just here. I remember, in in I was walking through Holborn in 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 London, uh, central London, one day, and um, they were uh, refurbishing a bank, and uh, uh, somebody said to me, "Oh, look, you know, there's one woman there," and believe it or not, it turned out to be somebody I know. Her name is Trudy Morgan, uh, civil engineer, and she was the boss. And and uh, so we uh, went uh, over and I in when I said to the guy, oh, I know, he thought I was kidding. And we walked over because it was, I, I didn't even know she was working there. And she introduced us and all these guys there. She was the only woman and there were about, been about 150 men. And they would say, yes, boss, this boss. And, you know, my friend was really impressed. And it was in London, you know, that you had that kind of unusual, even though, you know, in most uh, trades, it's not unusual to see women, including, of course, women motor mechanics in England fairly common now. Um, but even there, you know, it was it, it struck this person as something quite odd, let alone here, where, you know, when this came up and again, uh, as tends to happen, sometimes these stories, by the time they're shown two or three times, they generate a discussion in the office. And, you know, um, somebody was saying, oh, they don't need to do this, you know. Uh, and I said, well, look at your parliament, look at your national assembly, <laughs> you know. I don't know, six women even now, um, it, it, they do need to do this because, you know, um, if they were waiting for a man to hire them, um, it's not going to happen, no. most likely, you know. And, and you, you, you just quoted there something that happened in Britain, but, and then it, it took me back, now look at the history. Mm -mm, yeah, go look on. at how much women had to fight to get yes. yeah. every single right. <laughs> they were it. not even asking for privilege, it's just That's rights. It. Yeah. They had to fight. And it appears to me that when you're dealing with certain entrenched views, mm. it's going to be a long fight. Sure, sure. Uh, absolutely. Right. And all these voices, mm -hmm. as it were, the conservative voices, sure. they didn't need to do this or they shouldn't do that. I mean, we've heard them before. Yeah, quite. That's, quite. A, that's a universal chorus. They, there's nothing new. They don't yes. think they're not. They, they may not. They may think that they're giving you a valid argument, Quite. but they're just being a stereotype themselves. So this is <laughs> it. And, and you know this whole thing yeah. about women can't do this, women can't do that. And you know you talk about women having to fight the suffragettes in England, mm -hmm. fighting for the right for women to vote. And by the way, I will throw this fact, and you can check it online. The first place in the world where women could vote, in the world was in Sierra Leone. Mm -hmm. Imagine <laughs> that. They came out of slavery, and because of that experience of slavery, the people who were in Freetown decided that they wanted an equal society, and so women were given the vote. Mm -hmm. First place in the world. Absolutely. In the world. Never mind Africa, West Africa, anything in the world. Look it up. <laughs> but, uh, you know, up to now, in the Gambia, people are struggling, they're fighting. Um, to get this, and so you have here a women's uh, automotive um, business. But interestingly, um, they actually do train men as well. When our colleagues went there, there was one guy there who was being trained. So they're not exclusively, but it's predominantly for women because women are being given the chance to do this sort of thing. That's it. It's just important that you have a pioneer mm -hmm. who sort of cracks, as it were, the gender the, 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 Yeah, quite. That's it, just open the, the, the doors and everybody, yes, yes. people will come in. I think that's the important bit. Yes. So gradually, mm -hmm. you know, this, this the largest segment of our population is youth. <laughs> so, yes, you know what I mean? Exactly. So, a lot, of, a lot of sort of old beliefs, as it were, I mean, old wives' tales. They just, need to be just swept away. Yeah, they think about your womb and so on. Womb and on. That, that sort of thing. Sure. They'll be 
kids now will be more savvy, I yeah. think, with yeah. information because of the tool of the internet. internet. You say something, I can just I'll look it up. That's it. Two God, seconds. I can't even. I don't mm -hmm. even have to tell you that I'm looking it you up. Look even whilst I'm speaking to you, I'm like, oh, women's wombs will be affected I, if I do this. Mm, uh, then uh, it comes up, no. Uh, but you're right. So yeah. yeah. So so sort of we are set on a path now. Sure. I think it's sort of driven more by global, yeah, yeah. wider, broader sure. um, um, events, mm -hmm. ideas. It's a broad current sweep of ideas. Yes, indeed. It's sort of, that's and, sort of and pushing uh, everybody from Iran. Yes, even, well, even well, Saudi Arabia. Yes, Saudi where, where women are now given the right to drive. Absolutely. And work mm -hmm. independently uh, mm -hmm. without having to be supervised by a man and so on. But that's happened in the last 10 years. <laughs> Let's not forget. The, 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 sort Saudi. Of the, the yeah. new wind of change. Yeah, sure, sure. So it's, it's coming. It's blowing. It's who's got it or who isn't, but it's blowing. And let's <laughs> hope it blows the way of the Gambia. Thank you, Mr. Mboch. And now on to another story uh, which links us uh, with a bigger brother I mentioned earlier, Nigeria. And this is about our drug law enforcers teaming up to fight the menace of drugs. Have a look. Indeed, our partnership for delivering these trainings are coming at a time when DELIC is improving its enforcement capacity as well as drug demand reduction uh, initiatives. Our partnership with NDLA of Nigeria is one of the realistic steps contributing meaningfully to efforts geared towards tackling the world drug problem. Uh, there you heard. Um you're talking about you know, Nigeria and the Gambia, we were talking about earlier, about monetary union and the sizes. But then you take um, the Gambia, you take Nigeria, and why does it matter? We have a port. Lots of drugs in the West African zone come through ports. And so it's not unusual for them to want to team up and share experience, share ideas, expertise, best practice in tackling the menace now the, the the problems we face really they go beyond just borders mm -hmm. now we face really transnational For problems sure. drugs sure. well, human trafficking call it what we will what you will our sure. problems have been even climate change yeah. so the yeah. problems we face now this is perhaps the, one of the consequences of what we call the global village Indeed. so it Indeed. will always take regions it will mm -hmm. always take um, um, more than one and absolutely, um, part of our issues as it were, is certainly this, the systemic ones. So mm -hmm. it's good that we train, yeah, sure. we, we, we know what to do, we have the tools of, of investigation and, and that sort of thing, certainly. Yeah. But we've also known that one of the um, shortcomings, as it were, of the whole defense mm. was the human element. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> Indeed. Isn't it? Yes. Yeah. So uh, you, you, you need the technical stuff, sure. the, the training and, and, sure. and, and all of that. But again, it's the human element that's been undermining that's right. most and, and, of and our and efforts. I ethics. Think. Because ethics, uh, exactly I was I glad mean. that we were te teaming up with Nigeria because when I was doing the African News Roundup a few weeks ago, um, I noticed that there were instances in Nigeria where um, police officers had been charged because it was found out that they had been in collusion with drug traffickers. Um, they were making so much money that for them, it, you know, it was like in one instance they said the guy was making a hundred times his pay. Now if you can bribe somebody a hundred times their pay, there's a temptation. They might take it um, even though it's quite a dangerous thing. And so they were going to, they were saying that, you know, if these people are prosecuted and found guilty, they should get up to 30 years in prison, you know. So, uh, th but they wanted to make the point that, yes, there is that temptation. And so, as well as all the other systems and so on, there's the human element that you have to deal with, you have to tackle. We are suffering really both our countries. Yeah, Nigeria is the biggest, mm. but we are all suffering from the same malice. Indeed. In, in, Indeed. In, in the, that, 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 that malaise. Right. And, and, and remember, even during the RTRRC, mm. uh, one of the witnesses said, um, there was a time when we brought it here, Nigerians, from w with our army, the, the country known for its schools, and suddenly <laughs> you, you brought in um, the Nigerians to, to, to head our army. Not right. that one is blaming the Nigerians, because in the end, it was just Gambians who, who did it. But, sure. but you see, see the point. 
So this is really a, a difficult <laughs> one for, for, for all of us. Of course, we should have this um, um, training Sharing amongst ourselves, and obviously, and because this has to do with, with, with ECOWAS. But, but again, let's inject more seriousness sure, in, sure. into it. It's not simply these processes we go through, so workshops and all of that. Mm -hmm. In reality, how can we achieve what, what we want to achieve? Sure. Um, and really, the human element, how do we take away corruption from it? We know that these drug dealers, they can bribe. A lot of people can't resist the temptation and somebody else will tell you because they are not paid the salary. It's, it's, it's a circular, it's, it's, it's this awful circle that we are in. Yeah, sure. <laughs> and it's a terrible one, but thank mm. you for that. Uh, now on to our penultimate story, uh, the one before the last. And uh, this one, we probably won't spend as much time over it. And it's a case of he said, he said. And it's to do with the um, Gambia Federation for the Disabled. Um, somebody gave a statement and an interview to a newspaper and the other side uh, who they thought uh, he represented came out and said no he's not representing us. Are you confused? You won't be after this. Watch this. First of all I would like to tell the Gambians and non-Gambians, those who are watching me, that all my statements have nothing to do with the Federation. I was once a secretary of the Federation and I resigned based on my education career. Lamin Mane says he remains unapologetic over his ministerial sackings comment, adding that the GFD is his home and that he will not do anything to jeopardize or tarnish the Federation's reputation. I would say standard make a mistake. Why I say that? It was a, an interview done at, at standard. And even it was conducted by Alaji Mane. And even the dress I put on, if you go to the video of the interview, I did it at standard. Standard, even if you uh, play that video, the beginning of the program, as introduced myself, is there as Allah even mentioned me, as Lamin Mane, Chairman of National Organization for Disabled and Secretary General of the same organization as bra Bracket Nodo. Now, you might say, okay, it's uh, a mystery solved, so why are you playing it? Uh, the reason I chose that, Mr. Mboj, is because um, the Federation for the Disabled actually wanted to use the opportunity to say that nobody would make political statements on behalf of this organization. We are non-political, and if anybody was representing this organization, they would never say sack five ministers or six ministers or whatever it was Mr. Mane said. And that was the point that they wanted to make. Um, uh, but uh, for me, uh, they'd gone public with this but it, apparently they hadn't even contacted him, and yet they'd come out and condemned him. I mean, because he could have explained that to him. And the reason we wanted to do it was because um, at their press conference, uh, the media were there, and a lot of them carried their side of the story. I think we're the only ones who've actually spoken to Mr. Mane. But again, the wider thing about um, this kind of organization would not normally make political statements. Uh, absolutely, and, and for me, the merit of whether we should sack this minister or that minister, mm. that is not the issue. No. I will ignore no. that, quite. really. Yeah, so, so now, the, 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 the thing is, um, can Mr. Mani make a political statement in his own behalf? Mm. Does not necessarily have to be representing Gambia, mm. um, the, the, the Federation, Federation for the, the, the Gambia Federation for, for the Disabled? Mm. So the idea that the Gambia Federation for the Disabled prohibited political speeches mm -mm -mm. or political statements. Mm -mm. I am not sure about that. No, yes. There are certain institutions where, mm. yes, we don't want the members to be political. Quite. I mean, the police force, maybe the That's army. Right. Yeah. There are, I am not sure mm -mm. where the Gambia Federation for the Disabled should be able to do that. Mm. What they must insist on is that you are speaking for yourself and, and that not was the for point. the organization. That was the point. Uh, to, to be Gamp, fair, to, no, no, to that be was fair. The point. To to be fair to that them, was that the was the point. point they made. They uh, said absolutely. that if the person had said, I'm speaking in my own, you know, on my own behalf, yeah. and uh, you know, rather than on behalf of the organization, th they would have had no problem with it. But apparently, you know, that wasn't the case. But as I said, this one could run and run. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't have much, much time, and we mm -hmm. have one more story to go. And uh, final story takes us beyond our borders and to East Africa, to Uganda, to be exact. Why? Because they have struck oil. Have a look. But as noted from the concerns expressed by environmental groups in Uganda in terms of adverse consequences, 
it can have on the environment. Oil exploration can also bring about corruption that can cause civil unrest as it happened in Sierra Leone, Democratic Republic of Congo, Equatorial Guinea, and Nigeria, to name a few. The Gambia, on the other hand, is yet to benefit from any form of oil drilling or the sale of diamonds, even though the country has been identified by previous administrations as being endowed with oil. As is evident from the Uganda case, the time frame between discovery and drilling, which was 20 years, can be lengthy. Yeah, so don't get too excited. Those of you who heard that there'd been oil fields off our coast in the Gambia uh, between discovery and exploration could be 20 years. Absolutely, so yeah. it's a long wait, possibly. Mm -hmm. um, but again, wanted this story because um, when countries get oil wealth, it doesn't necessarily solve all their problems, particularly in Africa. I mean, the Arab countries seem to have done better <laughs> in terms of managing their oil wealth for the benefit, but Africa less so, Nigeria, Angola, lots of others. Yeah, you know. That's it, the curse of oil one. Mm. And it also comes in the midst of this worries about climate. Yeah, yes, it's indeed. It's effect indeed. on the climate. Yes, yes. When decades back, it was in the in And the Museveni forefront. addressed that at this okay, event. In, in fact, I wish we could have brought his speech mm. because he spent the whole of his speech most of it blasting the West, <laughs> saying that, you know, we've got, it's mm, going to be a mm. game changer for us in terms of finance, in terms of financing all the things that we would want to finance. We won't have to go to anybody for loans. He said they've had their enjoyment of drilling for oil and using it all this time, um, and they've benefited from it. Let us benefit from it as well. But of course, because of the area where it's been you know, the ecological damage is also, it's not, it's, just, it's not just that people are turning away from fossil fuels, like Albert, it's the other aspect of it, that a, an area of natural beauty is likely to be uh, damaged. Absolutely, everything that Museveni said there, mm. it could be, mm. there's, mm. No, there's no denying it really, Quite. but somebody else might make the argument that, but because of your very self, how you people are governing yeah. for this length, this <laughs> period, as it were, in this kind of winner-takes-all politics, mm -mm. then such things become a fresh impetus for um, um, the scrabble for power. Well, indeed. It's fragile true. institutions. Sure. And then you want to entrench yourself. <laughs> in well, it. It. So it's because of Museveni himself, possibly. Sure. That is why we are not going to achieve what he says. That that's what we want to achieve. Absolutely right. And a good point to end it on. Uh, I might be introducing Museveni at the uh, Uganda Convention in UK next year. Oh, no, this year, September. <laughs> Mr. Ambuch, thank you for that. And to the viewers, thank you for watching. Until the next time, goodbye.